Okay, but we gotta finish this wood first. And what we're getting ready to do here is pour epoxy, the first coat of epoxy for all of these, what will eventually be blue glass epoxy pools. So I've got it, I guess it's clear tape back there, but I've got it sealed off, I hope, or it'll be stuck to the table in the morning. And I'm about to mix a little bit of epoxy and attempt to just paint inside surfaces. I wanna seal them and I wanna seal my tape to the bottom of the board so that when I fill it all the way up, we don't get leaks. And then maybe, maybe an eighth of an inch of epoxy in the bottom, hopefully, so that uh, I have, I have a, a rigid base that I can then put my glass on. Now, I don't know if it leaks. If it leaks, it'll be glued so hard to this MDF covering on my table saw, I might not be able to get it off. But I think they're sealed. We'll know, we'll know 24 hours from now. You ready to go inside? No. Yes, Daddy. It's a wood press. I don't see any wood up there. Okay. Uh, well, here's the back side. Again, even with the weight, the tape rippled up. But it's uh, really rippled up in there. That's probably an eighth of an inch deep. But that's fine. You won't see any of this anyways. And it shouldn't affect the way the light passes through it. Oh, that worked nice. That's pretty. That is the table, buddy. That is the table. So I've been struggling with this board for a little bit now, trying to figure out what in the heck am I going to do And then I figured it out. What about breadboarding it? So here is my slab in the middle, and I will square up either end, and I'll install your, your basic cutting or breadboard ends. They will overextend so that I can put side rails of the same width, whatever I work this out to, on either side. This will be all open right through here. It'll, it'll be a larger tabletop surface. It'll be very, very pretty. It'll still enable me to get the light underneath of it so that you can see through it that I truly desperately want. This is how I will transfer my marks so that I get uh, two square ends. I'm going to lose a little bit of this pocket, which doesn't fuss me that much, and I'm going to lose that pocket entirely. I'm not sure how else, I'm not sure how else to go about it. Trees and the wood is in our yard. Apparently it's on fire. So here is the frame. It's simply some rabbit joints. I'm going to to use metal standoffs, L bolts, concrete bolts essentially, metal standoffs, so this board here will actually hover up slightly. To the top side, it's been ground flat, and my goal is to uh, keep the bark on. So the epoxy soaking into the bark, and then it'll turn from something soft and spongy to something hard and rigid. I had some heat-related sanding problems in that uh, some of the larger pieces of glass chipped and broke and that is simply from sanding too hard too fast with the belt sander but I can clearly see I got some bubbles so I need to get the torch out and just wave it over the surface now I've popped the bubbles uh, I doubt you could see any difference in the camera lens but I can see it when I see light shine across it what causes bubbles is either froth in your mixture which uh, is best if you can combat that early Maybe uh, throw your, your little bit of epoxy in the microwave for eight seconds, nine seconds, something like that. And it'll poof, it'll pull all the bubbles out. It'll have your work time, so keep that in mind. You'll have about half as much time to work with it. Most of them in this instance are um, bubbles escaping out of the wood fibers themselves. The epoxy is soaking in, the air's got to come somewhere, and it comes up. 
So because this is the top side and I actually care about the bubbles, I will probably come up here three more times. I'll do it uh, 30 minutes apart and then I'll give it an hour and hit it again. And after that, after that you run the risk of uh, marking your epoxy with the torch. Here we stand after several days of epoxy and I'm out here with my helper. And in addition to trying to fix a much beloved yet abused music box of, of his, I'm going to make a little wooden apple to stick it in. Ready to do the next step on this. This will be the back side. So uh, everything has been coated. See, we got some warp to it, but that's fine. That's the front side. What we're going to do now is go over it with the sander and level up the important bits. This is your first look at the, I don't know what to call it, picture frame, floating box. I'm not sure how it's going to be termed yet. Anyways, the slab will hover in the middle, hook basically on these large anchors. So there and then one in the wide spot there. Basically now I need to get this centered, then I need to mark these side rails so that they can go in the drill press. There's no way I can drill these freehand and get them anywhere as close to where they need to be. There they are in place. Now I'm ready to set the frame on and mark where they go. And there we've got the hooks set. But it does appear that all the holes are drilled square, except... Arr! See, each one is countersunk, right? And, you know, I've already worked a full day and I'm kind of hungry and kind of tired. And stupid. I uh, just autopilot. I started to drill the other side. Thank God I caught it fast enough. I believe I can, I believe I can take care of that. If I hadn't have fessed up, it wouldn't have been visible. You get stupid when you're tired. And now you can start to get a look at how this is going to work. And you see the, the bolts coming through there. The top sits proud a little bit. You never have too many clamps. There it is in place and torsioned up, which did uh, which did a great job of pulling this down because it had developed a bit of a a corner to corner twist and it developed a great job of pulling that twist out. Well, they went in clamped at 90, they came out at about 95 to 100 degrees, so they might be useless. I'm gonna go ahead and clamp them on. You can see that gap. I'm going to go ahead and clamp them on and we're going to see if they flex or explode. They're small enough they might flex. But I might be making new ones too. This is the slab after its first coat of lacquer. And I'm just going to go over it now and smooth it out so it can have its second coat of lacquer. Really fighting the cold here today. Really, really fighting the cold. I had to over thin the lacquer just to get it to spray. Here, everything's come out of spray and it's time to assemble it. There it is torqued. And for the doubters, Twisted her right back flat. Okay. You glue that wood. I'll, I'll glue mine. That's good. It's the slab's only half an inch thick. It's really pretty strong. It doesn't flex. I mean, it's not designed to be a ladder or trampoline or anything like that. But no, no, it it worked well. So I've sealed around these. Because they're pulled back, I'm hoping that the crack at the back side is being pulled tight and it'll be okay. Fingers crossed. All right, so you can see that I have ringed it with the tape in the hopes that when I'm all said and done, I won't have to do much. I 
cleaned out a little bit of room down in the cellar next to the furnace. This stuff with the coloring, it has an open time of 18, 19 hours. I did these yesterday. They, they have the consistency of like a gummy bear right now. These I've just done. So I got the table tipped up and balanced. So what I've got is this stuff is coming out of the freezer. I then nuke it a little bit, a little bit at a time until it gets kind of runny and I put it in here. <clears throat> and because this, this epoxy was now mixed almost three, four days ago, once it cools back off, it, it gets a little more so, solid than normal. Otherwise, I gotta leave it alone like this for 24 hours a side, for five days minimum. Then the whole thing is gonna have to harden for another two days and then I can touch the tops with the sanders and give it its final coat of lacquer. Nobody said working with epoxy is fast. Here's an interesting dilemma I ran into. I was sure this hole was sealed positive of it. Turns out it wasn't. I fill it to the top with epoxy and I can start to see it ooze out the backside. So now I've got a problem. First thing I did is I bailed about half of the epoxy out. I then started to add flour. Just something to absorb the epoxy and thicken it up. And once I'd added enough flour, it became a nice hard rigid consistency and then it would stop leaking all on its own. Something to keep in the back of your mind. You get a leak, Find something to plug the leak with.